Greetings, Earthworms, and this is Jetstream. As most of you know, a movie recently came out, and Invader Zim has taken the internet by storm. But I want to know why. I could watch the movie, but I want to know where this little green dude came from. So I couldn't help but look up the first episode. And since I've never seen this show before, it kind of sparked inspiration to maybe watch other first episodes of cartoon shows. So be ready as I review Invader Zim! The Nightmare Begins. We first start off on Conventia, the Convention Hall Planet. Wow, I wonder if they have a dining hall planet or a bathroom planet. Where we see a race known as Urkins. Again. Urkins. It's brown and green and it looks obscene and it almost has me burping. I must admit what I like best is a great big pickle gherkin. No, not gherkins! Ugh. Getting off topic. Turns out the leaders of this race are the tallest, who set up a conference to give the invaders they deem to be the best of the best an assignment. Standing behind us, however, are the soldiers we've chosen for roles in one of the most crucial parts of Operation Impending Doom 2! You and the audience just get to sit and watch. You should have tried harder! So you might be asking yourself, why are the tallest in charge? When you're big, you can push all the little ones around. They're looking up while you are looking down. Things are better when you're big. As the humorous assigning is underway, we meet Zim, who's running late. And why is he running late? <laughs> Sorry I'm late, my tallest. I couldn't find my invitation. You're lucky I made it at all. You weren't invited at all. Weren't you banished to Food Cordia? Shouldn't you be frying something? Oh, I quit when I found out about this. You quit being banished? To be fair, tallest, that is dedication. But we get the funniest flashback ever. <laughs> but sir, we're still on our own planet! Silence! Twist those knobs! Twist those knobs! You! Pull some levers! Pull some levers! This might explain as to why the tools don't really consider Zim to be a worthwhile soldier. I put the fires out. You made them worse. That and being really puny. No invader has ever been so... very small. So they give him an honorary sandwich and tries to proceed in ending the conference, but Zim is insistent to prove himself to the tallest. What? what? You got your sandwich? My tallest, an opportunity to prove I truly can be an invader, is all that I ask. Gimme. As the tallest has a plan to get rid of Zim by sending him to a planet so far out of the way they didn't even know such a planet even existed, which takes us to Earth. Meet Dib. He's an alien-obsessed little boy that wants to prove the existence of Fairies! aliens. I gotta say though, him and his family are just great. A few moments they are on screen, you really got a sense of who they are as characters. Dib drank the last soda. He will pay. Ah, so she's the little sister that will probably think her brother's a freak, he has a gothic look on things, but is overall a supportive character in her own moody little way. I was up on the roof, and I heard this transmission was coming through! Shh, 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 shh. not now, son. I'm making... Toast! A crazy, hard-working scientist who don't take the whole alien thing too seriously. Might not be the best dad ever, but... His heart is in the right place. But yeah, this might not be completely accurate. But if you've seen the whole show and this is how they are in the story, then man, I'm good. Meanwhile, the Urkins that have been chosen to go on their missions have been assigned with robot helpers known as Sirs. Um, uh, we have a top secret model for you, Zim. 
Wow, they don't even give Dim a fully working robot. That is how much respect they have for him. Poor Zim. It looks kind of... not good. Yes! Well, that's what the enemy will think. Get it? I see. Very good. It even fooled me. I am honored to be trusted with such advanced technology. Gurr, <laughs> reporting for duty. Gurr? What does the G stand for? I don't know. And I already love you. <laughs> so Zim and Gurr begin their adventure, and six months later, they reach their destination, planet Earth, where Gurr does his best to gather as much information as possible, so that Zim is able to blend in with the humans and live among them. This will go as well as you think it will. Hurry, Gurr! What did you learn? I saw a squirrel. He was doing like this! Now the disguising is pretty awesome. To do this, they click and select what they want to look like. And instead of picking one that would fool people, Zim picks a more, uh, obvious one. But we'll still fool people anyway. As for Gar, he's pretty much wearing a puppy dog onesie. It's adorable. And genius! Oh, oh, and making the house, they draw something that looks like a house and put it into the ground and pretty much grows a house. A genius! Genius, it's inspired. Later on, Zim enrolls himself into, uh, school, where he plans to learn more about the humans and the lack of bones they have. Jeez, she is nightmare fuel at its finest. I don't want to hear another sound from you. However, it would seem that not everyone in class is totally convinced of Zim being a normal human boy, as Dib so rudely points out. What about his horrible green head? Insolent fool boy! It's a skin condition. And he's got no ears! Is that part of your skin condition, Zim? No ears? Yes. Luckily for Zim, no one believes Dib, so after school we get some conflict and a pretty fun chase scene. We got jumping, crashing, trying to avoid vehicles, even running on top of the cars. And brainwashing of ice cream. A dog fight twice and ice cream. Like Can't cream. live without you ice cream. Life worthless without ice cream. Hopeless. Your existence is meaningless without ice cream. Luckily, after a save from Gar and gnomes with lasers for eyes, hello, Zim is safe for another day. Zim then goes and reports to the tallest about his mission on Earth, no doubt confusing and shocking them. And the episode ends with Zim signing off. Invader Zim signing off. <laughs> My spine! So, what do I think? I think it was pretty good. There was a lot of laughs to be had, the show actually does try to take itself seriously while making fun of itself at the same time, which gives us a really nice balance of comedy and drama. All the characters are pretty likeable. I even got a soft spot for the tallest. Sure, they're jerks, but they're not too overly extreme that you hate them. I don't think I dislike anyone so far. Would I continue watching? Sure! It generally seems like a lot of fun, and it's nice that something that came out a while ago found a place among the present day, appealing to people's nostalgia while newcomers take on a new experience. The imagination that has gone into this show is really fascinating, and it still holds up. Even the animation is pretty timeless. The epic shapes, and though it seems the colors are pretty limited and kind of dull, it clearly shows a style, and the style really works well. This has been Jetstream, and by controlling the web, I control the world. Now if you excuse me, I need ice cream. End transmission. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, but Jetstream, are you worried about Zim taking over the Earth? Why should I? Oh, I don't know. Something about him wanting to blow it up? 
<laughs> Don't be silly, Techie. It's the tallest we gotta worry about. <sighs> Gee, I really hope the space ice cream van gets here soon. Sugary energon goodness with sprinkles and gumdrops. Sirs, really, it's no big deal. We can just steer around. Wait! Why steer around the Earth when we can just blow it up? Yeah! We're great at blowing stuff up! What is that? It appears to be a... Blow it up! Sandwich.